recording, both audio and video. I say this just for my own benefit so I don't screw this up. Yep, we're awesome. good. All right, here goes in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to CORE. This is CORE on Wednesday, the April 29th of 2020. I'm Scott Johnson with Bo Schwartz and John Jagger. We're here to talk about the world of video games, industry stuff, breaking news, our own experiences, games we're playing, all of that, plus a few tangents we don't even know about yet, which is always exciting. Uh, how's everyone's week? Everyone all right? Everyone doing okay? Bo? So far, so good. Yeah, your family good? Um, your sister's good? We're all good? Everyone in my family is good. Good. Um, I've, I've heard... F- I mean, I know someone who is personally affected by it, but yeah. I don't know that I want to talk about it. Well, you don't have to talk about it. Here's the funny thing. On the show. <laughs> here's, the, here's the, not the funny thing, but here's the weird thing. The closest I've gotten anybody who's dealing with it directly are listeners, and I haven't had to, we haven't had anything that's like resembling a extended family member or any of that stuff yet. So I, f- I count myself a little well, lucky th- in that regard. One, this one resulted in, in a death. It's oh, geez. They pass. See, yeah. that's terrible. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it's t- very tangential. It's not somebody I'm related to, but still, it's that it's someone that they know within their family. So, right, right, right. Yeah, my kids yeah, keep was, my uh, kids keep telling me to go outside and get uh, sunlight because I guess vitamin D plays a role in the uh, deal. Now they got some some article I mean, talking about it today where they're saying, "Hey, vitamin D, low vitamin D are harder cases, and if you have a good vitamin D, a you're thing good." Yeah, that today says also that you'll have may- maybe. You have frostbite on your toes. Yeah, Whoa. I saw that. It looks like frostbite. Like yeah. every day, it's something new. Like, right. uh, you don't have diabetes. Uh, don't smoke. Yeah. Uh, go running. I, Get some I don't vitamin know. D. Hang upside down. Are... It'll be fine. You say you'll be fine. Yeah. Like I, you know, and and that's already dismissing anything the president advises yeah. of your country. Yeah, ignore um, him. Ignore him. He doesn't know. <laughs> you know, but you hear her talk about it, so it's just like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know who to listen to. Didn't Trudeau Getting get very it? Close Did... to home. He's coming to our state and encouraging everybody to gather for a big party. Oh yeah, I heard. You guys love that. Your Arizona people love that. Those visits. You guys not all that. of us, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> not all of us are thrilled about this. Yeah. Some of really? us. Yeah. Some of us aren't aren't too thrilled. As I don't, it turns out. I don't weirdly. think he's gonna do it. He's that. He'll either not. Maybe he'll come in a Pope mobile or something. Otherwise, I don't think he does it. There's no way. I mean, they're literally putting. The president, regardless of whether you agree with him or not, or like him or not, the president of the United States in a giant crowd like that, either he's in a bubble or they're not doing it. They won't do it. And if he's a bubble, I will laugh. That'll be freaking funny. Except there'll be people there getting sick, and that'll be sad, and that'll suck. But I will right. laugh. That part's not great. No. But if he's in a bubble, that's funny. That's pretty freaking <laughs> funny. Didn't uh, I thought your uh, I thought your dude had it or his wife or something had it and, and they're okay now? They're did they... uh, the what, yeah Justin's wife had it like really early on yeah and, and she's good. isolated for the two weeks. But my sense is that they're still separated. Yeah, um, they're keeping family apart. Actually, his mom, I think his mom's building set got caught on fire just this week. What? <laughs> <laughs> Someone set it on fire, or just which, which would be Pierre Trudeau? I don't know if you, I don't know how far back Pierre Trudeau was, but he was a very popular, you know, populist prime minister, and that's Justin Trudeau's dad, who yeah. was also prime minister. Sure. That, so that's you know, she's a first lady or whatever you call them here. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, anyways, her house got. Well, it didn't get set up. I don't. I don't know what happened. It was on fire. I don't know if it got set on fire. Yeah. What do but, they call them there? First lady. No, it'd be. I think they just don't get called anything. <laughs> just... You're saying these arbitrary names mean nothing, really, in the end. Is that what you're saying to me? Yeah, okay. yeah. We don't have a first lady. It's just the wife of the prime minister, I guess. All right. Well, this I hope Trudeau. I hope they're all okay, and that everyone in Canada is nice and safe and well, and that John avoids whatever civic center place. Where, where is it? Where are they meeting? The, where the sons play? Is that where that's I happening? don't know. I'm gonna avoid it. I didn't, you know. I this will shock you, Scott. I didn't have to look up where they were meeting because I wasn't that <laughs> concerned about 
winding up there. Uh, I basically it's not, it's my life right now yeah. is a is a right angle. I live fairly close to where I work, which I still have to go to work every day, yeah. and I make that drive to work, and I make that drive home. And every now and then I get the urge for breakfast from Taco Bell and I go there. And yep. that's about all I'm doing. Yep. And through that window, they have gloves and the masks on. And they'll hand you your your uh, your Taco Bell and you can drive away. That's yeah. Awful. Although, you know what happened yesterday? Huh. And I don't know why I didn't say anything. I think I was just so baffled that it happened that I, I was at a loss for words. Uh, needed lunch, went through the drive-thru at Burger King. Sorry, Burger King, you're gonna get flame-broiled on this one. Yeah. And they, uh, they're, they're putting all the food up by the window, and it's starting to get hot here, so the AC's going full blast. And I'm watching one of the bags, and the air catches it and slides it <laughs> off onto the floor. And the lady looks down at it, and I was like, well, where's this gonna go? She picks it up, puts it back on the window, and hands it to Oh, us. no! What did you did you say anything? Did you say no? No, I was I was so shocked she did it. I didn't say anything. Well, maybe it stayed all in the bag and was intact or whatever. It was it did stay in the bag and it was in a package in the bag, but it was uh Was it shattered? It, Everything was all shattered. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. It didn't survive. Oh man, that's no good. That's bad quality control on their part. They should they should have given you well, a new bag. It was the least of it because that was the worst meal I've ever had in my life. Oh my gosh! Bad. Really? Yeah. The the I could go into it. Just every part of it was bad. Just think of the way you would hate everything, yeah. and it was bad in that way. <laughs> Stale buns. The meat was like a centimeter thick and hard and odd. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was hard <laughs> and odd. The the yeah, ranch that, that dressing. assemblage of words just didn't like it. Oh, I love it though. Hard and the ranch meat. dressing that was inside the cup yeah. was not the texture you would expect. Ugh. Yeah, Wait, this it was, was a, a little Bell? more gelatinous. This... No, this was a Burger King. Oh, Burger King. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like. You know what? Burger King has disappointed me every time for the last eight times I've gone. I'm done with Burger it's King. It's been real bad. I got yeah. I got to stop going there. And you know, some of it was on me that I didn't like the meal. I pulled up. I was looking at the first menu. I saw a thing I wanted. It wasn't on the second menu, and I forgot what it was <laughs> that I had seen. And in a moment of panic, I said something similar to it that I didn't want at all. So that one's probably on me. But uh, the food wasn't good anyway, yeah, so it was fine. Yeah, that place sucks. I'll tell you what, though. McDonald's, this McDonald's near me, their yeah. little dollar chicken sandwiches, just what a guy needs when I have to drive by there. Mm. Yeah. All right, enough about food and how much of it we're putting it on our bodies. Now let's do this. Okay, so we should talk about some stuff going on. Um, there was a disgruntled employee that works for, I assume they work for Naughty Dog. Yeah, Naughty uh, Dog employee. They released or leaked some Last of Us story stuff. I guess the whole story. And yeah, uh, I'm, maybe not the full story, but they put out full cutscenes. Okay. Some of them in different languages. Which is a lot of story in those yeah. cutscenes. Um, so yeah, so the entire cutscenes leaked by this, by this over, what they call themselves an overworked employee, which wouldn't surprise me because, you know, the industry is known for its reliance on, um, what's the word you always hear about? Uh, crunch. Not, yeah, I always want to say cram. Crunch. Uh, new at Taco Bell, the cram crunch. Go get one. It's very mm -hmm. good. Oh my gosh, my microphone's doing that thing. I'm going to punch you, microphone. I'm going to punch you. You guys can't hear this, but I can, and it is so aggravating. I yeah, did, I hear I, nothing. I did yeah. something to a cable. It just sounds like you're mad at a microphone. For oh, no it's so obnoxious. Reason. Seriously, I'm, I'm going to... mad at a microphone. I'm going to punch it. Actually, I have to punch it to get it to reset itself, and it's not the mic. It's this cable. Ugh, long story. Anyway, uh, Last of Us got delayed, of course. Uh, I don't know if this is because of that, but uh, yeah, he, he did that, and now people are you know, pretty pissed at, at, at Sony and, and stuff because they've been trying to keep that thing nice and, you know, uh, secret. Mm. secret. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. I mean, and it's, it's, it's kind of bad on all fronts, you know, naughty dog should not be mistreating workers or, or overworking employees, um, by all accounts and not all accounts by a lot of accounts, um, it, it, it is a studio pretty notorious for bad crunch and lots of hours and things like that. There are people that are saying that it absolutely is this. 
Um, but that doesn't excuse what the employee did. Yeah. At the same time, I can also see somebody being so fed up and so frustrated. They're just going, what's the way that I can hurt them? Or what's the way that I can get this? The problem is, is that in a lot of ways, I think Last of Us 2 is going to be a success. And the people that really hurt is the people that are excited about the game. Yeah. You know, like I've, I did get spoiled. I saw it trending on Twitter and I was like, oh, did they announce a release date? That's what I assumed when I saw it trending and I opened up the trending and I was looking through trying to find out what the news was because I thought, hey, we're going to do a show. We should talk about it. Uh -huh. And uh, I immediately read some stuff that I didn't like very much. Um, and by that, I mean, I don't tend to mind spoilers that much. Like, I'm kind of okay with them. I wouldn't have sought these out on my own. Yeah. But uh, I, I tend to just go, okay, well, I want to see it in context and all that. What bums me out is the way that it was spoiled because there is some absolute just vitriol and awful people on the internet, which I know is not news for anybody. The internet is a shitty place sometimes. Mm. But it would have been nice to have... I mean, if I was going to get spoiled, get spoiled in a manner that didn't also make me just hate humanity for a period of time. Yeah. And uh, that's what I wound up doing. I don't want to get too far into it because even talking around it, you can start to infer things and, and people should get to decide whether or not they're going to get spoiled on something. But uh, it's out there. Be very careful. I mean... Another story we're going to talk about, I jumped in to watch a thing online with a chat room, and people were just spamming Last of Us 2 story spoilers in the chat. Oh, geez. Got the same thing I had already been spoiled on, spoiled again. So, you know, you got to be careful out there. It's pretty bad. Okay, here's my question. Does Ellie... Here's the here's the spoiler I want to know about. Uh -huh. Does... Uh, who's the main guy in the game? Uh, Joel. Joel. Does Joel become a zombie and she rides around on his back and that's her mount for the whole game. Is that weird that you were able to guess that? I mean, a lot of people were shocked that that was the direction they were going in, but yeah. you know, if you're going to guess it, I gotta, I gotta agree. Cause if I go, no, people yeah. will see through it. Yeah. They'll see right through it. I, I'm actually feeling pretty good about me sussing that out. Cause I've not read the leaks, but I just assumed that, that might be it. And boy, it's good mm -hmm. to have confirmation finally that, uh, yeah. the Joel mount confirmed. Uh, all right. Well, here's uh, here's the other uh, thing about that. We have a new release date. It is now June. Uh, let's see if we have the exact day in June. Hold on. Um, yeah, here it is. June 19th. And along with this news, Sony said that Ghosts of Tsushima, sorry, Tsushima, uh -huh. uh, will also, that Sucker Punch game will come out on July 17th, my birthday, a month after it's previously announced date, so it's being pushed from June to July. Um, but it's good to hear they're not being pushed out of the year, so that's good. They need to get yeah. these PM games out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I will say this to anybody: I just if you if you got spoiled like me, if you're bummed, if you're like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna like this game, yeah, you know, judge for yourself. First of all, judge whether or not you want to support a company that maybe does business practices you don't like. That's your decision. You you do you. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of people upset about it. They don't like some of the things they've read. They think it's going to make the game bad. They think, oh, they really screwed up this story. And I would encourage people to just remember that anything can be put into a bulleted list and sound bad. Yeah. I can take one of my favorite movies of all time, Empire Strikes Back. I can put it in a bulleted list that makes that movie sound like garbage. Yeah. I can go... Luke gets taken out right in the beginning of this movie by some stupid ice monster rather than doing anything cool. The Rebel Alliance, after blowing up the Death Star, loses their first battle to a bunch of things that walk around on four legs that are literally defeated by tripping. <laughs> Han and Leia decide to hide and make out inside the body of a giant worm before going to a weird casino planet and meeting some guy they've never seen before. <laughs> and uh, Han Solo gets frozen and taken away for... I don't know why. Oh, and by the way, Darth Vader's Luke's father, lulz. Yeah. Like, you can boil anything down to a bulleted list and have it go, hmm, I don't know if I like this. Yeah. So when it comes to spoilers, get out there, judge for yourself. It's fine. Yeah, or I'm going to try to avoid them completely, but I'm not that concerned if someone, if, if someone tries to trip me up, it's fine. I have an idea of what people are freaking out about, the, the yeah. stuff you're avoiding. Uh 
and that I'm irritated in by proxy by that because come on, really, like come on. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. You just like know, you said, you guys both know the spoiler. I don't. It's not the spoiler. I just know what the vitriol is probably about. It's, oh, okay. and it's more. It's probably more than just the video game. Is my thinking. It's probably yeah. It, yeah. it kind of ties to what we talked about last week with somebody whose name is Corona, and now they have to deal with a bunch of shit because their name is Corona, and they're yeah. like, "I didn't do anything. I just was living my damn life." Right. And uh, now we're we're in a world where you know maybe all of a sudden you have to be exposed to a bunch of you know for it hate speech and stuff like that for not doing a damn thing. Yeah. So that's basically it. Uh, that sucks. It does and suck. Internet. It's- Grow up. Yeah, grow up, Internet. It's about time. You're pretty old now. Wow, it was a, it was a class A uh, rant. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, also, oh, and Bo, do you, I mean, now that you got a PlayStation, I, I mean, is this uh, Last of Us 2 holding any sway for you? Oh, you I, wanna... I do not care about Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it looks like a garbage. I know it's not, <laughs> but it just looks that way to me. It's uninteresting. <laughs> On top of all of that, he's like, that game looks like garbage. Because but... the setting's so normal. You know what I mean? It's just mm. like it's just building. Well, it's all about story and you know the characters and the whatnot. I mean, my favorite part of the I'm game. I'm sure it's great. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. I, I'm not. I'm not saying like it's bad. It just I look at it. And it doesn't. It likes. To, it's the opposite of appealing to me when I look at it. It's so appealing like, to me, but uh, but what actually playing is what I had a problem with. I didn't like playing it. I found it to be uh, uh, obnoxious and sort of punishing and and sort of I don't know relentlessly. Not difficult, but just sort of, oh, I got to get through this just so I can see the next Ellie Joel cutscene because that stuff was amazing. The story is incredible. The voice acting is the best maybe ever. Like, it's really something on all those levels. But the actual playing of it, shooting mushroom heads, yee, not my jam. Mm. I didn't like it. Anyway. I don't know. I think I think it, it looks and the little bit I played. I mean, it feels like a quality experience. It just didn't appeal to me. So, All right. that being said, I you know I don't like spoilers either. I don't think we're all hungry to know, but at the same time, we just need to let people who make the magic make the magic and release it when they're comfortable. It's, uh, it's, H- un- it's unfair. HB in the chat says you watch the story on YouTube. Actually, it's good. I would do that. It's not a bad I idea. May, I, may do I've that played anyway. the game and I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I may do it just okay. for the heck of it. I mean, I've seen the entire thing through for the parts I played and then I finished it on YouTube, but I wouldn't mind just going and watching all the cuts and all the story bits. That would be fun. Unless it's like the Blizzard trailers, which I do like to sit and watch. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, I've watched through like Warcraft and Starcraft games I've already played. Yeah. When they do those things. But like if it's a game I haven't played, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to watch the movie on YouTube because I think your enjoyment of the cinematic experience is affected by the fact that you played the game. So I don't like doing the Coles. I'd rather just not have watched it. I think there, <laughs> I think there is an element of that. I mean, it, your mileage may vary. I mean, if like... I played it, I'm all for it. It's just if I haven't played it, I'm like, I, I think, I think I would be getting a diminished experience, and so I just don't want to do that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd that's... rather just not do it. That's a fair position to take, I think. Um, all right. My favorite news of the day. And I watched about an hour of this stupid, not stupid stream. Guy's clearly a really good artist. But there was like, by the time I got there, he'd already been there for five and a half hours or something. Um, yeah. Talk about uh, <laughs> making your artist and do crunch time for video games. That seemed like a long time without taking a break because he went nonstop. But anyway, there's an artist. Never really figured out who he was. It probably said somewhere. Um working on sort of a mural that would give away the basic idea of what the new uh, Assassin's Creed theme and location and stuff would be and had this cool Mm. music playing the whole time. And as he painted it and got further and further, it became very obvious that the rumor that they're going full Vikings and, you know, going Norse stuff is, I thought it was pretty obvious or pretty early uh, that that's what they were going to do. And it appears that is exactly what they're going to do. And, that chat was terrible. I had to turn it off. John's right. They're just ridiculous. Like, that's the worst. Why even have chat on, honestly? What value is that bringing to anybody? It's the, the worst thing. Um, it just sucks. So I turned it off. It was a YouTube stream. But uh, it was, A, it's always fun to watch other artists work and see them, you know, how they're using their tools and stuff. But uh, also, it got me super jazzed because that is 
the setting I want. There are two settings I want for Assassin's Creed, especially now with the way Assassin's Creed has evolved. Like that is a full on RPG now. Like it's got some mm. Assassin's Creediness in it still that it'll, that will probably always have, uh, which you know involves some stealth and some cool jump down and kill a guy with a knife kind of gameplay and that sort of thing. But John, as somebody who's played the last two, like I have, you know how much further they've taken it. Like it's in a it's a whole it's like The Witcher. And and Assassin's Creed uh, did the nasty in the back of a truck and out pooped uh, the new version of Assassin's Creed. But if if they like, because I really enjoy like The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Like it's kind of bad, but I love it. And Vikings is also bad, but I love it. I I don't play Assassin's Creeds, but I would play what you described of Odyssey. Yeah. In the Viking, like I that's a sale. Yeah. I'm buying that. I'm uh, playing that. That's I like awesome. Viking stuff. Me too. And me I know too. a lot of people do. It's not a shocking thing, but but goddamn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, big boats, big big cool boats and like dudes I want with people talking like uh, weird to, Yeah, what's know? it going on? Oh, that yeah. will be great if that's how they talk cuz most people Oh, they've got, they've got to do it authentic. That's the other yeah. thing. It's like the assassins even though I don't play I know it has a reputation for like authenticity yeah. and that feeling, yeah. even if it gets mystical and mythical, it's still grounded in trying to be historically, if not accurate, there's a verisimilitude to, you feel like you're in history. Yeah. Kind of. Oh yeah. Uh, and yeah. their, their codex. I love that for Vikings. I'm Vikings invading England and taking it over. Yeah, let's do it. Cause their whole, their whole thing with these games have always been this way, but even, even the more recent ones where they've inserted a little bit of fantasy, you know, there's, some mythology and stuff going on in the Egypt and the and the uh, ancient Greece settings, but they adhere to like, hey, this is an actual, you know, monument still there, and here it is now, and this is accurately portrayed. It is positioned where it is in the aisles. You can see it from the west. It's this tall. It's this wide. It's in this shape. Like, like they really go out of their way for that stuff, and um, and I really like that attention to detail. But also the character stories are really good. The girl in the last game, I forgot her name. Cassandra. Cassandra, dude. She was one of my favorite characters That's all the year. only thing that I'm bummed about. That's the only part of this that has me a little sad is I'm going to miss Cassandra so bad. And hopefully we get a character that's just as good that I'm going to enjoy just as much. But well, my I'm, goodness, I think maybe I'm secretly a little in love with Cassandra because <laughs> I... I played template. so much Assassin's Creed Odyssey just because of how much I liked her. Yeah. They would they would be so smart to pick up a phone, call Catherine Winnick. Yeah. And have her be Lagrotha. Who's, who's that? Who's the female? Help, help that's me. the Les Lagrotha from Vikings, the blonde shield maiden oh. who's Ragnar, yeah, who's yeah. also, I mean, maybe just dropped dead gorgeous. May, maybe like, they are. Maybe they, who knows? Uh, and a, she's a martial artist. Sure. And she's a Canadian. She could do all the mocap um, you need and all that stuff. Yeah. All the mocap. Yeah. Have her like that's a like, yeah. I mean, I'd be in. That, I, I, like, that's hey, waifu territory. There you go. Well, we don't I have don't they, yeah, that is waifu so territory. We don't have a lot of details on as far as like, are you going to be able to choose a male and a female protagonist? Are they going to be brother sister again? Like all those things are unknown at this point. But we at yeah. least know the backdrop, and I think we know the name. Although now it's not showing up for me. It's Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Valhalla. Oh, and, oh, you know what's exciting too is that like the Loth Brooks. Like I, I don't know if you watch Vikings, but like the later season, it has the crippled younger son. Mm-hmm. Um, Ivar the boneless yeah and he rides a chariot basically a wheelchair because he can't walk and in that culture that's like a sign of weakness they usually kill you as a baby but because he's the son of a king he's alive oh I lost zoom oh but I'm still in audio so I'm gonna keep going um but he's also got like a major personality screw-ups like a, a real disorder that makes him violent and 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 just insane and it would be so cool to see an assassin's creed with those brothers and those characters yeah. they were real they're based on real people um fictionalized greatly in the vikings tv show but yeah still uh man oh that that's so exciting it's exciting right that's it's great. a really great I'm, I'm stoked it's I'm a, so stoked. it's a great backdrop and has all sorts of potential and i already love the series so for me this is a no-brainer they just need to hurry up and bring it out and I guess we don't even have dates. No, we do not have dates, right? Let's see. Um, oh, Bo, you should see a new invite in the Discord. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm just uh, clicking it. No over. idea what caused that. That was weird. Um, anyway, let's see here. Oh, is there a trailer? Hold on. Hold on now. Did I miss this? Well, they're supposed to be doing a whole lot of talk of it and uh, like 
releasing details tomorrow. So there's a good chance if you're listening to this, you know more than we do. Uh, but yeah, there's supposed to be a whole thing tomorrow. Here it is. It. Five hour. Oh, it's Boss Logic is the cool. artist. Give him some. Give him some love there. Oh, here it is. Assassin's Creed official tease. Oh no, that's him with the art. Okay, so no, yeah. no full trailer yet. Uh, should but maybe be tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow morning at eight a.m. It says here. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh damn, we're gonna find it tomorrow. I'm looking at the. Oh, I want this now. I know. Today. Look how excited today. Bo is about an Assassin's Creed game. I love those. I love that style of like TV show, fiction, whatever, whatever. Like I, I just I eat it up. Yeah, I love it. Well, good because yeah, there's some it, cheese it, too. The Hillmaster, I'm really excited for. It's probably. I mean, Greece really got me in a way that I didn't think I I realized I would love, and uh, but Viking would be pretty darn high on the list of settings for me as yeah, well. Yeah. I, I really want yeah. I mean, it's like, like Skyrim like a, but in the real world, you know, a little bit. The, the Hillmaster for TWBD was literally Floki from Vikings. I loved him that much. Floki like, is the like left, uh, Floki is the, um, not Ragnar, but that boat builder guy who's also sort of a druid. Oh right. Yeah. Um just I'm sure if you do Floki Vikings, it'll be the first picture that pops up. F O uh, Loki with an F. Oh like yeah. Flo like Loki. But with an F. I'll locate with an F. Yeah. Yeah. And then just image search and you'll see who that is. You guys are back on camera. Thank you for doing that. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. No problem. The call just went away. Sausage made. Sausage officially made. Okay. Uh anyway, yeah, very exciting. Assassin's Creed. Get catch it. Um, all right. Now, where are we now? Sorry, I got a little flustered with the stupid camera thing. Oh, Epic Games is requiring customers to enable two factor authentication to redeem their free games. Uh, I think that's fine. I don't really have a yeah. problem with this. I'm already. I mean, with the amount of times I get, it's died down, but especially in the beginning when Fortnite was really taking off, yeah. someone's trying to recover your Epic Game password. Someone's trying to log into your Epic Game account. Somebody tried to hack my account probably 30 times a day. I would get an email about it. Yeah. So it probably is time. Yeah, to, this, this, to this put probably two factor um, on there. Yeah, this probably also increases the value of their client base when they're talking about it for their business. So, if you're like, I have a large install base, you're like, yeah, most of them are not vet really invested. They made an email, made an account, whatever, took some free stuff. Yeah, I'll never hear from them again. Yeah, but if you have to set up two factor authentication, I just dropped a loony. If you heard that, I don't know. Oh, that was a loony. <laughs> I was a loony. It's ah, gone. Cool. <laughs> um, but uh, I was playing with it. It's nice um, to see you're you're the same with your money as you are with your dice when we play D and D. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know. I really like because the dice I now keep near the desk. So whenever I'm on podcast, I'm like I grab a dice and start playing with it. You've been ah, hearing it, be, I guess. You shouldn't be sorry. It makes you human. I like it. It's like this moment um, of like, oh yeah, our yeah, DM isn't just oh. a genius DM. He actually drops shit like the rest of us. I like nah, it. There's like 50 D20s on, on the floor. Um, <laughs> that's the funny part. He doesn't pick them up. He's just like, well, that, that's how many forever. D20s I have. It's gone just, forever now. Oh, it can't be fun. recovered. Um, yeah, fun. but I was going to say it increases, I think, the value of their install base. And they're like, yeah, I, these are all the accounts that have gone the extra step to have a phone number, yeah. essentially, um, which is valuable information for them. They're smart. They're epic. Like You see what they're doing, and they're not doing it with great stupidity, even if we criticize their blunders, they're doing it. Well, they're, they're being making smart about it. Power moves. Yeah, yeah. And I get the and, free uh, game every week. I go. Or sometimes it's two games. I do it every week. I check it and I get them because even if I don't want them, I got them. They're mine now. If I ever want to play them, I can. And actually, there've been some really good ones in there. Stuff that I probably wouldn't spend real money on. Like, um, uh, I liked the the Just Cause series, but four was sort of panned for being just sort of more of the same. But also, I kind of like just just cause core mechanics and dumb stuff it does. So I'll probably check that out. And hey, it was free, so I you own that yeah. forever. Like it's your game. It's not like you there's some subscription that when it lapses, you no longer have access to these games. Like you just own them. So I do it every time. I'm more than happy to put in two factor. I do it for every other thing I'm signed into. So oh, for the king is the current uh free game on there right now uh i was thinking about that game oh yeah the for day. the king's that's great a, that's we, a quality game yeah. people should definitely pick that up they don't put junk up there they put good games sometimes games that are brand new they had that um perf um that perfectly reliable delivery service or whatever it's called it's like a streamer idiot game but it's you know people seem to like it and it wasn't even out yet 
Yeah. You know, now that you say that, that's a genre of streamer. Uh, it is. That's not news or a revelation, I guess. No. <laughs> Some people are make there are there are there are studios making games around the idea that they're the they're weird to stream. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, hey, what if we made one where uh, your balls are flopping around? <laughs> yeah, do yeah. that. Streamers will play that all day. Ha ha ha. And that's how, and you make some sales from that. And the streamer's like, oh my God, puck chap, kappa, kappa, Bible thump. My balls are Bible thump. Yep. And you're like, <laughs> kappa, and it's, kappa. it's funny because I watch this and I'm used to it, but everyone I know my age who isn't already in, in like internet culture, yes. who are, they can't, st- they, they are just over the moon with, you know how old you know in the old we're fine i'm getting older i remember being young and being that person and now i'm seeing everyone around me hardened to that oh like, yeah I can't, it happens i just can't go down that path young people yeah this is too weird yeah sometimes you guys <laughs> it's just the way that's life that's just what it is yeah. but uh real quick side note someone in the chat was asking about valorant and whether it was any good or not um i'll, I'll know really soon because they're giving me a beta key any minute now i don't know what they asked me this morning. Oh, any I, minute. Uh, yeah, they told wow. me this morning it'd be on its way, and I haven't gotten it since this morning. So mm. I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to try that thing and see if that shooter's any good. Looks like it's a combo of uh, CSGO and uh, a little bit of Overwatch thrown in there. And um, I don't know, just that's best I can tell. I've watched some streams. It seems fun. It's very hit scanny kind of weapons, very CSGO. If you played a lot of so Counter Strike, you, you, you do really enjoy CSGO. I like um, it. I've watched a lot of it, but I've not played it. But I know I remember you talking a lot about it for years. Oh, yeah. The original, really uh, the original mod, like back in 98, whenever the first yeah. mod hit for Half Life, I played that thing till the wee hours. We'd stay at my the office I worked at, and we'd have LAN games just till freaking 4 a.m. and then still have to be yeah. at work the next day at 7. So, so the game seems better with people. I mean, have you had an opportunity to play with a squad in recent years or anything not, like that? Not recently. Know? A little bit of solo play because I don't really have... Like, my son has a whole group of friends that play with him, and I tried to play with them, mm. and they're just too good for me. Like, I got just... I got destroyed and was it was yeah, a that game has been around so long that it's a different level of skill. You can learn it, obviously, because there's new people playing it, but it's so different than what it was back when I played it originally. I mean, I got, I remember getting kicked off a server because they thought I was cheating because I found a gun that did like the mid range zoom and I'd just walk around zoomed all the time and I was way more accurate, way faster than everybody. And people were like, he's clearly cheating. I used to yeah. get kicked from servers for that. Now, like, people don't do that because their reflexes are so fast, they'll just pull out a sniper rifle and instantly kill you in one shot in half a second. Doesn't, yeah. Doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. I mean, but I can't tell you how much fun it used to be to have even just four people, two on two, in an office, and these are people you knew and that were in, you know, the room next to you or upstairs in the same building and sneaking around these maps trying to trying to get the hostages and them, like, camping in places looking for you. Some of the most intense, fun good times of my gaming life happened in half and or uh happened in um counter-strike and few things Same really compared me. to it was really something back in the day uh, mm. i think i may have said this before but when i was in high school and we went into our i think sophomore year of a computer class yeah our teacher told us we could install whatever we wanted on the computer but we couldn't let the freshmen find out if the freshmen found out we were uh we were in trouble wow so we all installed counter-strike onto the pcs and every lunch, a, our whole class would sneak into the computer lab. We'd do it a little knock. Somebody would check the door because only certain people were allowed in. And we would play Counter-Strike all lunch period long. It was amazing. And we'd just do LAN or we would all team up and we'd go online. And it was, Is well, it, like Scott said, it was some of the most fun I've ever Yeah, done. it's sublime. But these days, since everything's just sort of... And it's interesting. This will kind of lead into our, our Morheim discussion later. Um. But because nowadays it's like we're all kind of separate together in video games. I don't. I'm not making a pandemic reference here. I just mean like, you know, online's different than it used to be. It used to be that if the three of us wanted to play Halo and do it properly, we would lug our Xbox originals over to each other's houses with our with an extra TV, and we would all play that way. That's how you played Halo. Heavy freaking TVs too. Right. I mean, that was that was it. Or in PC days, you'd bring your land, you'd bring your computer to your buddy's house, and you'd play Quake that way, Quake One and Two, and and Half Life or uh, Counter Strike would be the same way. So we don't do that anymore. It's all very accessible. Anybody from any desktop just get in, or any console can just sort of get in. 
and now you're just with other people you don't normally know. That doesn't mean that friends don't play together. Certainly they do. My son's a good example. He's got all these friends that play with him. Um, I think I would probably way, be way more into that. I'd be more into Siege. I'd be more into um, like a lot of the, the competitive shooters in a way that, that I'm not now. If I had more people that I had that constant sort of thing going on with. Like right now, Nick and his friends cannot stop playing Warzone, the new uh, Battle Royale for... Uh, for Call of Duty, which is very, very, very good. But because I don't, I mean, I'll play here and there with Garrett or somebody else who happens to be on, but because I don't have a regular thing going on, the drive just isn't there like it used to be. But I'd love to relive some of that stuff. Like my Counter-Strike days are so, I have so many memories, dude. Playing on Dust, DE Dust. Yeah, Dust all, 2. Dust 2, all day. I loved Vineyard. Over and over and over. We'd play those maps and we never got tired of it. And there's a reason that game's like one of the most like coolest success stories ever. So it seems like Valorant's trying to capture some of that. Whether they'll do it or not, I don't know. Um, I need to play it. But some like some prominent Counter Strike and prominent uh, Overwatch people have jumped to it, and they're doing it pretty exclusively these days on on uh, Twitch. So so I don't know. We'll see uh, how it goes. Uh, all right, where was I really going with this? Oh, I like this note because it made me think about space games and i haven't done that for a while except for my uh, no man's sky but fleet carriers are coming to elite dangerous explain that to me also i'm still pissed at those dicks you don't want to hear it oh let me tell you why i'm mad at elite dangerous okay here's why oh, you are i, I bought this. years ago because this rage because bo suggested it. he said hey you should get elite dangerous and i said oh really and he says yeah and i'm gonna stream some and you did and i watched you and i was like oh dude i want to play this game that looks so rad and i'm gonna get this game so i got it picked up elite dangerous installed it uh what a year and a half later or whenever it was they had some new thing come up that was like a multiplayer only thing called elite dangerous arena do you remember this mm, okay it was a yeah, hot minute I, yeah didn't care about it but it was a thing no. and it was free and so i said oh i'll download it that's fine i download it it's free i played it once twice mm -hmm. no big deal and then every time after that that i would ever go to and launch uninstall reinstall doesn't matter anytime i try to play regular old elite dangerous it launches the arena launcher by the way arena no longer exists they don't sell it they don't send put it anywhere i can't download it it's no longer available yet all it says is that i own arena and that i don't own proper elite dangerous so then somebody felt bad for me and sent me a key so out of a fan or something uh i went to do that key the problem is my account is still saying that i only have arena and not the real thing and the people at whatever they're called, uh, the company that makes this game, never got back to me about any of it. I could never get any kind of customer service on it. So those guys pissed me off, man. So you basically got locked out of your account, and they didn't provide any support to get you back in. That's basically it. And basically then, it. And then I that, gave up. Well, that's awful. That's it is awful. disheartening to hear. Yeah, you know what? That, that, that's an interesting story because I did scroll down the comments because I didn't buy the expansion yet, yeah. the Horizons pack, yeah. which I think this is part of. But... Uh, there's a lot of negative reviews, uh, oh, and they're nice. about things like this: lazy developers, something's not working. The, the great game, I had so much fun, blah blah. But the developers are lazy mofos. Oh, <laughs> it's like so the, that you say that actually corroborates a lot of the negative reviews on the expansion that I saw. Yeah, and that might be so, that wow. might be indicative of what's going on over there. I don't know if they're just. Well, that tired. makes me not want to play it either. I mean. <laughs> Like, I, confidence in the game, I mean, is important. Right. And yeah, I don't know. I just... Uh, Anyways, that, I got excited because I haven't been in there in a while. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, fleet carriers. Hmm. You know, maybe with all the polish over years, the game would be interesting to try again. I'm mm -hmm. curious. Mm -hmm. But that story makes me... I know. I feel like I got left in the lurch and just they didn't care about my 50 bucks or whatever I spent on that thing. And Like, I think I think it's like if your account's fine this whole time, then there's no problem. Like two people signed to a company can have two completely different experiences. So, yeah, uh, it's just discouraging to hear that if you have a problem, you're out your ass on a game that really wants you to like grind and spend a lot of time in it. Mm -hmm. and, and they want me to know. believe it's the premier simulation for a space sim and they want me to they want me to dive all in and I can't even freaking launch the damn thing. So one of the stats in, in the article was that so people have been exploring nonstop since the game launched, right? Big yeah. initiatives with hundreds of people. They've still only documented 0.042% of the existing game space. Right. 
Right. It's crazy. It is crazy, right? right. It's nuts. Yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff's pretty impressive. And I want to get back and check it out. But maybe No Man's Sky is just, it's so polished now and it's fun as hell. I'm just fine. I prefer it. Like, uh, it's my pace. Um, yeah. But but the, the appeal to all those games when they're done really well is there. Like, I'm looking forward to the um, Star Citizen someday. Yeah, one day. One day. I'll be a senior Star Citizen <laughs> when I start playing it. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a discount to get the, uh, the AR. AR oh, they should have seniors discount. Yeah, they should. Senior Hello, discount. Hello, I'm calling. I want to know where to send my check for the Star Citizen. <laughs> this is actually a really good tweet. I'm going to make I it in a tribute to you. Seven thousand dollars for Wait, a save spaceship, it. and I save it for Fred and Can maybe or something. Yeah, you're going to figure something Curious out. That's a very there's when a joke. I can get on the spaceship because I just want to. I'm thinking of being a pirate. <laughs> You get the senior space, sorry, senior star citizen discount. There's a joke there. I gotta, I gotta, yeah. I gotta suss you can that. Show out. title it too if you want. All right, we'll come up with something. I'll give you, I'll give you yeah, credit. Yeah, the star senior star citizen discount. I like let's... it. Uh, will Scott ever stream Red Dead? I did. Okay, chat room, you distracting. All right, let's see. Mike Morheim uh, <laughs> did an interview with who was this with? This was with a big. Uh, it's um, a dude who. It got a lot of compliments, but I don't think I've seen him before. It's for it's Venture Beat, Venture isn't it? Beat. I thought yeah, it's Venture Beat. Venture Beat. Okay, so Venture Beat uh, has a games fire chat, their fireside chat thing they do, and they talk to different leaders in the business. I've seen this before, but I didn't re- realize they had uh, Morheim queued up for this. So anyway, they do. Uh, co-founder Mike Morheim shared some experiences that are key to the success of gaming, talked a bunch about Blizzard, and you know he's a great... He's still, like Bo said before the show, he's a... He's an ambassador for the for the company, uh, even now that he's gone. But obviously, it's to loosen up a little bit. Gaming in general, too. Sure, 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 sure. Also, you know, some some have argued that some of the Blizzard problems that have happened in the last couple of years were things that were on the tail end of some of some of his uh, ideas that didn't work out. So I don't, you know, not yeah. to it's not to give him any crap for it, but you know, he's 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 an interesting dude who is in a very interesting position, and he has interesting things to say. And one of them was he believes or recognizes that accessibility tools in WoW, meaning LFR and uh, layering and controlling the population on different servers by mixing them all up and having them together and that sort of stuff, have diminished the social aspect of the game, which you have to argue in its day in 2004 at launch and for a very long time was, and maybe still is, the pinnacle of like community tool sets within a game to get everybody talking and so sure you could chat and there was the stuff like that in everquest and other games but it was never quite this easy uh quite this all-encompassing um they even took ideas from old mmos like the way that the command lines worked and stuff like that but they made the guild system a lot easier more accessible so that accessibility early on actually really paved the way for the social aspects of the game but he would argue a lot of the stuff that's happened since has diminished some of that. John, do you agree with that sentiment? Do you think Mike Morheim is is right when he says that? I do. I I but I think there's an argument to be made and that gets made that it's because of it's purely because of things like LFR and ease of use. And I actually think that that I don't think that's the right way to tackle it. I certainly think it's been a problem. It's kind of created the issue or made the issue more. Um But uh, one thing I would recommend people do, and I think, Scott, you may have even retweeted this, um, Greg Street, old ghost crawler himself, uh, actually wrote up a series of tweets about this that was really interesting, talking about where we were as a society then, that, Mm -hmm. you know, email and chat and a lot of things we take for granted nowadays just wasn't as prevalent at the time. And it, it also afforded a window and an ease of use to a lot of these features that now are super common. And I think he has a point. I think Mike Morheim has a point. Um, I, I think anybody that says, oh, you know, LFR, LFD, all these things have, uh, have ruined the game or ruined the social aspect, I think all of them have a point. But I also think Blizzard's development of WoW in general has shifted to kind of be this like maintain the status quo and they've kind of stopped thinking about 
WoW as an RPG as much. In fact, I think there was actually a Q&A not too long ago where someone said, is WoW even an RPG anymore at this point? Yeah. And I think you look at a game like Animal Crossing and what yeah. it's doing. Yeah. You got Danny Trejo on Twitter being like, hey, who wants to come to my island? Yeah. And I'm like, me, Danny Trejo, <laughs> me. I don't even have it, but I want to buy a Switch just to come to your island. Um, that stuff is awesome. Because that game, even for its faults, tries to facilitate a social experience. Mm -hmm. WoW has gone into the realm of facilitate a end game grind and a let's go through this thing and let's do this. It hasn't really leaned into the social aspect of the game. It's kind of ignored that. Mm. And so you can say, well, you added features that diminished it. And that's part of the problem, and I would agree, but I would also say they never looked back and said, well, are there cool social things that we can do in the game? Because you can look at a feature like, um, oh, what's it called? They do it, uh, I think, once or twice a year. They do this big transmog competition. Right. I can't think of the name right now can't for either. whatever reason. I know what you're talking about, but, but I can't remember. You, you queue for it, and you go in with a group, or you can go solo, and it puts you with a small group of people. And you basically are given a uh, the trial of style. That's what it's called. Oh, there you go. And uh, you're given a, hey, make your character dress up like this. And they'll give you a prompt. And then you try to make an outfit that matches it. And then everybody grades you and says, okay, well, this is what we think. And I've done more socializing in the trial of style than I have in dungeons and in raids and walking around the world and all of that. It's yeah. been my social outlet for the game. Not, I mean, not relying on it, but we talked, we laughed, I went in with friends, we criticized other people's outfits. Like, it's dumb, goofy fun like that that allows for this, and Blizzard hasn't been leaning into stuff like that. Yeah. They, they've got this one thing, and they don't really seem interested in exploring that space, and I think they should, because that's the benefit of an MMO. Right. I think that's, I think that's really well said. Um Here's what Greg said. You mentioned Greg Street's post, and I did retweet it today. Greg said, People forget sometimes that when WoW became popular, things like instant messaging didn't really exist, let alone having social features in every game. I mean, think about that, actually. That alone. Like, games just didn't have that kind of stuff. All games have it now. It says, Early WoW players would see another player and be all, Is that another human? That's crazy. Um, and he's right. People connected on WoW. It was the first experience for many gamers of making real online friends instead of in, in real life. <clears throat> there were those stories we received about kids who used to use WoW's mail system as their email or a father who could only talk to their teenagers through the game. By the way, a lot of this is happening in Fortnite, like right under our noses. This is what kids use Fortnite for. It is, it, by the numbers, the most popular social network with kids, period. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's where they're hanging out. That's where they're talking. That's why they keep launching features that are socially oriented and having live concerts in the middle of the game from like real stars and stuff that Travis Scott guy's showing up looking like a 900 foot fell reaver rapping in the middle of the world all of a sudden and nobody can shoot anybody and you're done, but you don't care because you're having this huge communal social experience. And I think we, uh, we as gamers have been a little too flippant about Fortnite's impact. In some ways they are, they're picking up I mean, the slack. It's undeniable for sure. Yeah. They're picking up the slack. Uh, he also says this, uh, it's going to be really hard for any MMO in the future to recreate the sheer novelty of social interactions that WoW had produced at the time. The world is different than it was then. That's, that's the entire thread, basically. And I think there's wisdom in that. Mm. So mm. There's that. I, I have a few things to say. Say, go. One is, I said this years ago, so I feel a sense of kinship with Mike, I mm. suppose, a bit, mm -hmm. a little. Mm. Yeah. It's nice to see hear him say that. And the other thing is... Um, the best time for wow for me like when i think of social aspects i don't think of the people i know i think of the strangers i, I interact with and the experiences i have from that yeah. so to me the best time for wow where its accessibility was the golden days for me was wrath of the lich king because yeah. it did start including group finder features but it wasn't enough you had to say hi to people and, and get to know them and then if you found a good group, everyone has spent so much time, spent enough time that they'd rather stick around and hang out with you and do other things than move on to other groups. Where right now you just bail and LFD again and do a daily or something like that. Yeah. So 
I, 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 I personally, that's been my experience and feeling of it. And, um, but see, here's the, here's the problem I would say and to me and let me and not to interrupt, but I think it goes with what you're saying. And I want to get your reaction to this. One of the reasons, and this is, I'm not defending blizzard for any decisions they make one way or the other here. Um, but here's, here's the question when you played and had those experiences, it's, and I was playing and having those experiences. I think what was also probably happening without us knowing it, because we're not seeing the data is that they were seeing data that showed the vast amount of players in world of Warcraft, given its initial accessibility over other MMOs were playing the game by themselves. And when it was so heavily weighted toward the solo players, meaning that's who was playing your game, they had no choice but to make that game as as accessible as possible to those who wanted to play that way and that's what started us down this path and 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 the and the minority of us who loved that kind of cohabitation can be as mad about that as we want to be but at the end of the day i think they may have served the larger audience without us knowing it even do you know what i mean and kept the numbers as high yeah, as they could have been I mean, kept I, I I really think you can look at a lot of decisions and say, well, it's a business, it's to make money, it's to do this or that. But the game itself is a, is a work of art, a very complex, multi-contribution discipline work of art. And there's things that make it better and there's things, alchemy, that makes it worse. And regardless of the rationale behind it, it, it in my opinion, made it worse. Hmm. And because there's something special about games where exploration is a gameplay reward and feature no man's sky being a good example yeah uh no man's sky also being an example of you never barely ever bump into anyone else they finally added the nexus and you started to see people and that's when the game felt alive that no man's sky lacks still those that functionality that gets you talking to people i think yeah. in my short experience but wow is definitely not bumping you know going to a far reaching area in in, in an mmo that's far from civilization comes with a feeling it's not an exciting feeling you can sell as an esport or on a Twitch stream, but if you're by you're not a Twitch streamer, you just want to play a game, and you're out in this dangerous area that's far from civilization, and you you meet or you brought another soul out with you, that's that's the social aspect I think for me I'm describing and wanting and, and loving the most, and it's esoteric. It doesn't appear on a bulleted point form at a stockholders meeting. It's very esoteric stuff, and I think World of Warcraft had that in spades. It was convenient enough still as an MMO. It made a lot of innovations to make it easily playable, right? But it still kept some that there's um, that necessary work that it's a drag, but it has a reward attached at the end that makes it worth doing. It's just you know if you're antisocial, it's not going to be a game for you if the mechanics make you do it, right? And if you go complain about it. The company wants to be like, oh, people are complaining, let's fix it. But really, the correct answer is that particular aspect of gameplay is not for you. You just don't like it. We don't actually have a problem to fix here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, no, no. This is, this is I mean, making a I, good point. I think that's funny because I, Bo and I agree um, to, to a point on that. Um, I am one of those people that when I'm doing questing and WoW, I don't want people around me. Like, yeah, I'm people the same. send me a group request while I'm questing, and I'm like, why? I'm, I'm the same to too. To totally this. the same. And yeah. when I played through that game, even in the early days, even you know before a lot of changes and all that, when I got the quest where it was like, you need to do this with the group, I went, Ugh, oh, guess okay. I'm not doing that maybe, one. <laughs> maybe I'll avoid it. Yeah. If I see someone in the area, maybe I'll go, hey, can you want to do this together? But you know, I didn't, I didn't like that content, but I was appreciative that that sort of content existed. Yeah. And I think back to like EverQuest days, and a lot of this is, you know, it's it just changed because we have websites and we have ways to easily figure these things out and a lot of quality of life ways to get around things. But like part of what made EverQuest so social where I did interact with people was they didn't try to have this rigid, like crystal clear leveling experience of you go here and you do the quests here. You would be in a place that was a low level zone and there would be sections of that zone where there would be things that would just wipe the floor with you. Yeah. Like it was just dangerous. Yeah. And so your curiosity would be, well, what happens if I got a group of people together? Could we fight that? And you could, and then you go, well, I want to know what happens if I do that. And 
some of that you can still get away with. Nowadays, what people would do is they go to Wowhead and they'd be like, hey, what happens if I kill the high-level bandits at this camp? Yeah. And they'd look at a loot table and they'd go, they have no loot. And they'd, they'd go away and they'd go, ah, it's not worth it. Um, but that's what I mean by I think Blizzard needs to figure out ways to get that social aspect back. Because I don't think the answer is necessarily like, oh, well, we need to bring back mandatory groups and things like that. I mm -hmm. think the answer is they need to say, okay, we know people want to level and do leveling content solo. Let's let's offer the ability to do it solo or group, but let's also find some cool things for groups to do and some cool ways for people to adventure together and earn something and do something by taking that social step that, that Bo's kind of talking about and, and diving into that pool and that content. And if you don't want to do that, then Bo's right. That content's just not for you. That's right. not for you to go and, and do at that point. Right. Yeah, I you're you're both making really good points. I think the one thing that gamers tend to do though is we like to look at the good old days. Just like I was talking about Counter Strike earlier, the good old days when it was fun and it was in the land and we didn't worry about, you know, Valve having a mega monster esport on their hand or whatever. Um so it's easy to do that, but on the other hand, this is progress whether we like it or not like I if Blizzard wanted that thing to continue to be a, uh, a thing that got more and more people to sign up for it, which is kind of the goal of a company that's going to burn through money to the point that they have to make money to burn it, right? They gotta, mm -hmm. They're going to provide WoW, they got to pay for WoW. And so to do that over time, they had to do these things. Otherwise, it is too obscure. Other games would have come along and said, well, look at all these things that we're doing and how much easier it is for you to get into this and do this. And people would have gone to those games more often. I think that they just didn't have... I don't think you have a choice. And I don't think anybody has a choice. You have to kind of follow the trends. The innovations happen. You either get on board or you don't. Um, you know, it doesn't... Uh, it also means there's a lot of, like, chaff. Like, you're going to have... Do I have that clip here? I love the chaff clip. Hold on. A chaff. I got it right here. Captain? Nope. Where this one. I have the chaff. There you go. Uh... Other things that come along and go, we can make a um, a battle royale. And then it fizzles out and goes away because it wasn't as good as the other battle royales that are doing well. And maybe there's you know a ceiling to some uh, subgenres in gaming or whatever. But in WoW's case, in, MMO, in the MMO world, other games came along. And like you said, they had these aspects that for like D&D &D players or people that are just like really into just like the systems of a, of, a, of a hardcore RPG brain, that stuff's amazing. But there's a hard limit on how many of those people are going to sign up. You'll get them all, basically. And then there's a whole bunch of other people like, well, I just want a thing I can get in and fish for a whole bunch. Can I fish in this? <laughs> and so you got to make a yeah. good fishing game for them. And for the other people that just want to get in and get out and can only spend an hour in here a week, you got to make it so they can if you want to grow and have it become as big as WoW got. And you know, by the time Lich King came around, and I'll agree it's one of the high, you know, high points of that game, if not the highest, um, they had done they had they had enough things for the old crowd to still be in love with things were also still new enough that it was still cool but then you had enough changes that you could bring others in it was also the peak of their growth by the way they were growing and that's about where they maxed was that expansion so they they were at a weird crossroads there instead of staying there they kept moving toward accessibility and and I'm hard pressed to think about what else they would have done. I can disagree with what they've done or that it's not the best or whatever, but I still just don't know how you stop that kind of momentum, that kind of progress. And with any company, with any game, with any advancing technology or advancing uh, sort of social changes when it comes to tech, like I can, <laughs> I can, I could, I could make Animal Crossing on this Switch my email for everything if I wanted to. This could be how I communicate. And I'll say to people, they'll say, hey, can I send you that uh, request? I'll say, yeah, but you got to send it to Animal Crossing. Like, <laughs> I, I could do that, but that doesn't, it, it, you know, I'm limiting myself. I have to kind of go further, go farther. If we were all happy with what we had, we'd all be on Friendster still. We'd all think MySpace was great, but we don't. And then there are things I don't love about Twitter, and there's things I really hate about Facebook. And it'll keep going. This, dire this direction is where we always are going. I just don't know how you avoid it. It's well, just... yeah, and I mean, I think to your point, 
like blizzard could do what i said they could do what bo said they could stick by their guns and you might make a game that's more social you might make a game that bo likes better or i like better but that doesn't equal success and i think that's what you're kind of saying yeah. is like yeah you can make any kind of game you want they could have done anything they wanted but would that be a successful game because right now they have a successful game <clears> so it's <throat> kind of hard to look at it and go ah there's blizzard screwing up yeah because by you know they have their ups and downs for sure but by most accounts, still a pretty successful game, especially considering how long it's been out. Yeah. Um, but I do think it waxes and wanes a little bit too. You know, right now you have a bunch of people that are confined to their homes, looking for ways to interact with other people, looking for social interactions, social spaces to do things. And I don't think WoW, for an MMO, is a particularly good place to do that. I don't think WoW is a good social game at the moment. It was a better social game back in the day, and I don't think it's particularly great at it at this moment. And so I think you are going to see people that go, hmm, you know, th this isn't really a great place to socialize. I'm going to go to Fortnite or, you know, whatever other place that I might go. And I think that when the developers are also stuck at home looking at it, I think they might turn around and go, you know, Maybe we are diminished in this. Maybe we should lean into this. So they've kind of moved away from the social aspect, like you said, kind of out of necessity and what they see. But you might see the desire and the necessity flip, especially as we as people, our desires for what that is flips. Because yeah. I certainly didn't care about social features that long ago. But now all of a sudden it's like, oh, man, this would be a cool thing for a bunch of us to get together in and yeah. do something. The, the good news is this new expansion seems to be leaning into the the RPG-ness of the game, starting a new character in a meaningful way. They have a whole new starting zone for everybody to go just get going. Um, the level squish is a, is a part of that. They're, they seem to they seem to want a bunch of that back, whether they succeed or not. Got to wait and see, but the alpha seems promising to me, having spent some time yeah. in there. So I don't know. I mean, a lot. Of, I think Blizzard probably agrees with this. They probably are just, they're probably in there all the time talking about I know they're talking about these things internally because I've heard about internal meetings from people who would know. And they... They have these discussions, and you know there are people there that are like, ah, oh, remember 04 when we had to do this? And the other guy's like, yeah, but what else are you going to do? We're not going to, wouldn't, we'd stop selling WoW if we kept that in. You know, like, there, I know these discussions happen, and it's yeah. super interesting from our perspective to see how it all evolves and changes. But, you know, it's not always for the best for those of us that want things to stay the way they were or whatever the happy place was. But then there's a cap to that, there's a, there's a cap. And, and and guess who has that cap? Uh, RuneScape has that cap, and EverQuest has that cap, and these games hit that le that meant that ceiling, and they go, okay, well, either we change a ton and go crazy and spend wads of money to try to get in front of everybody's face, or we stay where we're at. And now they've got their happy little group, and that's okay. In fact, that's great. I think the RuneScape story is amazing to me that that thing still thrives the way it does, um, and it's because it pleases the players that want to be there. But that's not a mass. That is not a mass game. That is not a mass. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, that is not a mainstream. Like you go see Endgame because you're because it's a temple. mainstream experience. Yes, it's not a you're not going to go see some uh, indie movie in the movie theater because you're going to wait for it to stream. It's the same kind of thing. Like Blizzard is a blockbuster. It just is. Everything they make is blockbuster level, and it's always been that. So. And I, I am old enough to remember when Blizzard launched and when it was in alpha and beta and when it launched in 04, so much gnashing and crying and swearing and people pissed that this was the Care Bear MMO. And when you die, you didn't have to run and get your stuff. You just had to run to your corpse. Ooh, boo-hoo. How hard is that? Like, they, people complained up and down that you could solo in that game. Holy shit. People lost their minds that you could just take a paladin and level to 60 in Vanilla WoW in 2004. Like... It's just different day, different coat of paint, different reason to complain. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it leaves some people in the dust. It left them in the dust then. Those EverQuest people weren't happy about it. And then they moved on. And then now we're here. And now it's, you know, the same kind of thing. And I don't know. I'm not trying to say that none well, of this is worth missing, it. Missing those times is a weird thing because I think you're right. Things do change. Maybe there's there's nostalgia wrapped up in a period of time in online gaming where meeting people felt dangerous, I suppose. At least yeah. for me. Yeah. Well, that's someone, that's like, true. Who are you? And they're like, oh, I'm 
part of a drug gang in Mexico. And you're like, okay, well, I got to move on to my next quest. So see you later. <laughs> or, you know, like just, you don't, you never know what you're going to get. You, it, meeting strangers felt dangerous and cool and not something everybody did. The ubiquitousness of social media probably is also making the flavor of socializing and meeting people anonymously mm -hmm. in, in WoW in the context of a game world with a bit of fantasy role play is not as dangerous. Like we all know the same memes and the same jokes and the same shorthand. Like this whole being connected thing means everyone's the same. We're all homogenous because we all read the same news sources and Reddit feeds basically that meeting someone in, you know, in India is just like, Oh, they know how about that president Trump or whatever. It's not, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like an exotic thing to be on the internet meeting people from around the world right. in a weird Azeroth place where it used right. to feel that way for me. Like, who is this person? Yeah. Look at yeah. look oh, at us right now. We got a, elf, two you know? two yeah. guys in America in two different time zones, dude up in Canada. We're all talking in real time, seeing images of each other, doing it in high fidelity, spreading that out to the world in high definition, in real time to a streaming service. When WoW came out, none of this existed. Like, we just weren't there. So, so we take it all for granted. Like it's such a weird thing to think about. Yeah, because you know? I mean, even the Planet Side days, I thought I'm going to go lament about that game at all because I know I tend to. But there was like I'm on a random server, and there's this guy who's really good, uh, and he was German, and he was like, "Oh, I'm going to kill them now, going down the stairs." And I just I loved it. Like I'm just like as dangerous. I'm meeting a German. He's good at killing people in a shooting game. This is scary stuff, man. He, what if he's <laughs> You know, yeah. and and it's exciting, and I just I just don't get that from online play. Everyone's like, "Ooh, can you pick a healer?" You know, it's like, it, oh, I know why. Oh, By the I'm way, sorry, feed, like it's not dangerous. Quick, you know? quick note: I figured out why. Apparently, I don't know when this changed. <laughs> There's a time limit on the the video. They meetings. have a they have a forty minute time limit, but they weren't they weren't applying this to me until t this show. Why would that? They be? know it's a COVID what you're up measure. to. Yeah, I guess so. Um, they're like podcasters are not welcome on this service. I don't want to pay pay monthly. I don't want to. What is they, they can do here? This is all dumb. I don't want any they're of this. Getting you. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's lame. Okay. Here's what we're going to so do. Can't... All right. I'm just going to add you guys for another 40 minutes. Hold on. <laughs> These guys are yeah. just going to have to. They're just going to have to live yeah. with it. Get, get us back in. All right, so let's invite. Let's I got it. abducted once in EverQuest by a guy that I think worked for Interplay. Oh, tell me more. I was playing. <laughs> what? I was playing. I was playing EverQuest, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy comes along. We start adventuring together, as you do in that game. And uh, he's just talking to me. He's like, "Yeah, what do you what do you think of this? What do you think of this game? I just kind of got into it." You know, what are you thinking about it? And I'm like, that's fine. I like this game. I'm yeah, playing it. Yeah. Uh, and we're, he's like, yeah, let's 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 level together. Let's talk. Yeah. And I was like, OK, we're so we're playing EverQuest. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, hey, you stay up on uh, on the, the games that are coming out. And I was like, I guess. And he's like, you heard of a game called Sacrifice? I think it was Sacrifice. OK. Was that mm -hmm. an interplay game? I don't remember. Yeah, it sounds familiar. I don't have that any memory familiar. of that. <laughs> that's funny. He's though. like. He's like, if you like this game, you should check out uh, It Is Sacrifice. <laughs> is um, it? Okay. Yeah. It was, uh, oh, it was Shiny Entertainment. Okay. Oh, no, Interplay's on there. Anyway, so he goes, he goes, if you like this game, you should hear about the, have you looked up Sacrifice? You should check it out. Here's the website. Go check it out right now. Hmm. And I was like, okay, sure. I like games all check it out and he's like yeah tell me what you think mm. so i go to the website and i'm like is this like the same type of game as everquest and he's like oh it's very similar <laughs> and uh you I did like, dude you got you got schnuckered by a guy who worked there <laughs> yeah he's like recruiting people to his cause on everquest and i was like what the hell is this and he's just like he's like do you have any questions about the abilities in the game I was like, no, not really. I kind of just want to keep playing EverQuest. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of it's kind of all I want to do. That's really and weird. It, it was weird. I got abducted for a small period of time in that game. That's amazing. I actually love that story. That sounds. That's my kind of story. I did end up buying it. I guess it worked. You did. You won. ended up getting it. I did buy Sacrifice <laughs> eventually. How was it? 
It was nothing <laughs> like EverQuest. Video That's for sure. Game. Hold it's on. not a great game. I want to look this up. Sacrifice video game trailer 2000. You know what it was kind of like? Yeah. Uh, do you remember Brutal Legend? Yes. It's like the proto Brutal Legend, where it's like a RTS, but you're down on the battlefield controlling your troops. Okay. It's kind of like that. All right, let's see what the. I found the trailer. Let me play some of this. Oh, jeez. Graphically, we're on some... Well, yeah, it was a long time ago. Oof. Okay, the gods pit magic. Uh, against muscle. Ooh. And tell me again where you saw this. Or what game were you in when he when you got accosted or whatever? Playing playing EverQuest. Okay, so it was an EverQuest. Yeah. Boy, this is ugly, fugly. It did, however, because I think that game came with a trailer or something for the game Giant Citizen Kabuto, okay. which I liked that game a lot. So it <laughs> did lead to that. So good on you for uh, leading me to Giant Citizen Kabuto. What is Giant Citizen I Kabuto? I've never heard of that. Uh, Giant okay. Citizen Kabuto is a fantastic game where you play as three different races. One of them is a giant called Kabuto, I think. Uh, it's got really dumb kind of like British humor in it. Uh, it's fantastic. Okay. Oh, this is shiny entertainment. This is a Dave, whatever his name was, joint. Um, the, the Earthworm Jim guy. That's shiny used to be that his company. Anyway. All right. That was a fun. <laughs> that was a fun, weird look at John's early aughts life. Uh, all right. Interesting gameplay choices, John. Eric, yeah. Well, I mean, you got to hear some of the voices from Giant Citizen and Buddha. I'm going to put this in Discord. Okay. Scott, I'm listening to it right out. now. Play right. a little of this. This is great. This okay. guy's great. All right. Here He's we go. Best. Giant Citizen. Nice teamwork, lads. Here, look at this. I've created a new bomb which will destroy the doors to the prison where they should be holding Timmy. Come on. Give me a hand, Ridge. Okay. <laughs> It's called a pop-up bomb, and I've made it extra light, so you'll be able to move around easily with it attached to your back. I mean, in in all honesty, that's better VO for that early of a game. VO was very bad in this era. That's yeah. pretty. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Oh, let's see. There, let me skip ahead. Hold on. Not that. Wait. The child. He was caught spying. No. <laughs> I won't let you! Ah, lovely. Oh, this looks like shit, though. The game looks it's so, so weird. <laughs> it's a really weird game. It's great. I've never heard about that, but I'm now I'm curious. So later I may have to watch more of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where the heck were we? Oh, uh, I know where we were because we got to do this. Where is it? This. <laughs> Games that we played this week. I played a whole lot of Aratus Lord of the Dead, which came out of early access. I talked to Bo about it uh, one night when we were playing Heroes. Oh, I couldn't figure out. It starts with an I. I looked up Aratus with an E. Yeah, it's I. I, I R A T U S. Find Excuse me. I wish it was Aratus with an E. If, <laughs> if you. Uh, yeah, it's if making you, me Aratus right now. <laughs> I've talked about this game before, but um, I really, really like it. It's the it's as if you're on the other side of Darkest Dungeon, that you're in charge of all the, the baddies. Uh, and in a lot of ways, it, it lifts a lot of mechanics, sort of the turn based mechanics and stuff, and, the, and, and a little bit of the look, although the art style is totally different. But kind of this the, the way that game's laid out is very similar to that but that's where the similarities end it gets really interesting um you're you're this undead um or you're this long gone necromancer that gets raised from the dead and now you're kind of back at it you're assembling your hosts of of awful creatures to fight uh, heroes as they come to fight you and um like i said it's turn-based which is an interesting thing this week for me because all i played is turn-based stuff with one exception um Anyway, I like it a lot. Uh, I won't go into too much depth here, but oh, this seems really cool. Yeah. Like I, I said that last week, but I actually can find the game now. So I watched the trailer. It has um, a Ravenloft horror aesthetic. Like everything's a mummy or a vampire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of that some, kind of stuff you know, for sure. Evil courtier. Sure. 
sort of villain. Yeah. And they're, they're zom- you know, it's Lovecraftian a little bit. There's zombies in it. Well, it's I was going to say it's, it's Daedalic games, mm-hmm. which have, like, I think they're German. Mm-hmm. I, I guess the, it doesn't look like the developer is actually Daedalic, but some other company. But, you know, they 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 have a bunch of games with that distinctive, like, German fairy tale book art style, yeah. which I think is here. Like, the Banshees Looks- are just weird looking, and they just, the art mm-hmm. style really does it for me. Um in some of some ways, the art style on the surface is like, oh my gosh, what kid, what uh, freaking rush loving kid who was in detention for too long drew this on his notebook? Like, there's some kind of heavy metal kind of vibe to it a little bit. Um, but the actual like character stuff, the way they animate, the way the battles take place, it all it works real well. I really like it, and here's the main reason: it's scratching all the itches. Darkest Dungeon scratched for me without the freaking constant punishment. So if what you liked about Darkest Dungeon was trying to make it so your dudes didn't constantly go insane, uh, you know, and you were you were always out of food and your light was always going out and you were always going to die no matter what, if that's what you liked, this game may seem a little too <laughs> bright and shiny to you even though you're playing the bad guys. This game is all about just traditional RPG mechanics, kind of strategic back and forth, what abilities do what. You cause insanity to the other players or to, to the uh, things you're fighting. So the Banshee will have an ability where she'll just get up to you and go in your face, and it'll like take half your sanity yeah. meter down on the, on the character you're trying to fight. Gosh dang it, microphone, I'm going to kill you. You guys can't hear this, but that's so annoying. Um, and uh, and so if they go insane, there's a chance they may leave or run or kill one of, their, one of their own people. So again, you're kind of you're kind of just on the other side of what Darkest Dungeon is, and you build your own minions out of guts and parts you get from the guys you've killed, and you have a graveyard that you upgrade a bunch of abilities on. So it's kind of got this like roguelike element to it. They have tons of uh, options as far as difficulty, so you're not just stuck with one super hard difficulty. You can can move it around to what you like the most. I think it's very cool. It's got a good review overall on Steam. It is out of early <laughs> access. Erratus. You know what else? The they the seem day. to have a, a data like also has a um, looks like a budget Divinity Original Sin two potentially. Oh, really weird. Yeah, it's called Iron Danger. Oh, that sounds horrendous. Twenty twenty. That sounds bad. Whatever that is. Does that sound bad? Sounds bad. Uh, the top review here, 9 out of 10, PC Invasion. Iron Danger is a fun game that takes us to fantasy Finland and lets us play with time. Wow. <laughs> All right, Iron Danger. Yeah. Get it on your list, John. I can see you nodding in agreement. You want it. Oh, yeah, that sounds like uh, like top tier. Yeah, good stuff. Iron Danger. All right, then in my other uh, uh, time with uh, <laughs> turn-based games, I'm really into them right now, uh, Gears Tactics came out. That is a polished, rad turn-based game in the vein of XCOM, but it's its own thing. It feels like Gears of War. Turns out uh, duck and cover uh, stuff in Gears of War is perfect for bringing the camera way up and saying, hey, what if this was a turn-based gear or uh, XCOM-like game? It's just perfect for it. It's bloody. It's gritty. It's got all that meaty sort of action you expect from Gears, but it is entirely How's the customization is it full cog customization so yes and no like XCOM? um you don't i don't think you're going to be able to go in like john does and say i'm going to make a whole team and all their names are going to be jimmy jammy and jimmy and they're all going to be pink or whatever i don't think you have as much of that kind of weird control over it uh, which i know is a thing john really likes doing so it may not be for I him i really like that and if you're going to give me set characters yeah. which i also like tactics games that do that yeah I want to be able to make them kiss and maybe have kids. Well, in, oh, I got bad news then because there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's that's what Fire Emblem does. It's great. I love Fire oh, Emblem. Oh, I don't. That's, I didn't get the reference. Yeah, yeah I didn't get it at first either. Um, it I is, know you guys didn't play it, but it's a great game, and you make your soldiers fall in love, and they have anime drama, and then they have kids through a weird time mechanic where your kids come from the future to help you fight. I played the 3DS version of that game, and I really did like it. But I don't think it had that romance crap in it. I don't think. And if it did, I avoided Wait, which it. Which one? The 3DS? 3DS one. Did that have all that in yeah, there? It did. Oh, yeah, I avoided it, did. it then, like the play, because I didn't play any of that weird. What? Yeah. You missed out on the best part. The best part is getting into a fight and killing shit. That's the best part. And that's yeah, where. Yeah, but ge- if you do it standing next to somebody you like, <laughs> then they start to fall in love because they're fighting next to each other, Scott. And then, because the game has a time mechanic. All of a sudden, a time rift opens up, and your kids from the future come out, and they got 
the look of the mom and the hair of the dad or something like that. And you're like, I did this through my sheer will. I put these two soldiers together and I made romance blossom on the battlefield and they made a baby. Yeah. And this is the best. And they've got all the traits of both parents. Yeah. I, I mean, that I don't doesn't sound great to it you. Do, it sounds like I'd rather play Rogue Legacy or something where I carry forward a couple of the traits, but I don't have to think too much about the anime drama between the parents or any of that. Like, I'm not into that at all. So F that. Those are bad ideas. Here are the good ideas. Gears in uh-huh. a tactical game. It's beautiful, number one. Really pretty game. The cutscenes look like you're playing Gears 5. Like, no expense spared. It's in-engine, but it looks insane. Uh, it Honestly, it makes XCOM look bad graphically. And XCOM looks pretty good. So that says something to me. Um, very Gearsy. I love the way they handle Overwatch stuff. So, all right, imagine you're Overwatching, or let's say an enemy, one of the grunts is like up on a little thing going, oh, all right, I'm going to shoot anything that moves, all right? And you see a big red cone where his Overwatch view is. Mm-hmm. You can either, you know, play fast and furious with that sort of thing and get shot a lot or whatever, or you have an ability, or at least characters that have it have this ability you switch to your pistol and you can disrupt overwatch specifically and you have a chance of not hitting him looks like any of these games but if you get him let's say it's 80 percent, pop him in the head he goes and falls out of overwatch mode now you can freely move around and not worry about him uh working you so really interesting mechanics there grenades are a gigantic thing wormholes will open up on the ground like in gears dudes hopping out of it to fight you they're all taking their positions and I got this old man with a mustache who does grenades. He tosses a grenade into that that hole and stops reinforcements. They're done. No more come out of there. So it's the strategic thing to do. Um, also, I don't remember the name of those. Are they scourges? They're little squatty dudes that kind of run at you and melee you in the in the, all the Gears games. Oh, a uh, little... I don't remember what they're I know. called. They were all monsters to me. But you get, I really didn't get into Gears lore all that much. It was just like monsters. Well, imagine the allied... I forget all their name. The only thing I remember is there's E-holes. Yeah, there, there are E-holes. <laughs> so imagine, okay, you got this guy over in some cover, and he's he stops his turn with Overwatch. He goes, all right, I'm ready, or whatever. And then the other guy that sounds a lot like... Uh, oh, Liam O'Brien's all over this game, by the way. Like, he's the first is voice he, you hear. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll help Bo on this decision. Um, plus, it's on Game Pass, so you just play it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, uh, I don't have Game Pass anymore. Oh, you anymore. don't have Game Pass right now? Crap. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> over on never, the I never play. I wasn't playing. On the I other side play. of this thing is your other guy. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna put him in Overwatch mode. Shunk. It's just two of you during this kind of tutorial mission, and then ends the turn. And now it's enemy's turn. You know how it is in in yeah. uh, XCOM. It's like enemy turn, and then the camera zooming around, and showing you stuff. And all yeah. of a sudden, out of nowhere. A whole bunch of those Scourge dudes come running out of nowhere and they're crossing into that line of fire. And instead of that sort of, oh, he sees it pop, it's just laying waste to these guys and just smearing their guts all over the place. It's really visceral and fun. I like it a lot. I expect that, so I'm glad to hear that that's the case. Yeah, I like it a great... I'm playing through that thing as hard. I mean, I'm definitely curious and interested. This is probably enough to get me a resub to the Xbox Live service, I think. Yeah, even if it's like five bucks, play it for a month. Do that. I've I've already installed it. I haven't had a chance to play it. It sounds very good. I just think I would like it a little bit more if I could make the cogs kiss. Okay, you can't make the cogs kiss, but you can make them gently touch those those boob armor circles they all have on their chest. They gently yeah. go clink. They can do that. Perfect. Yep. I'm into it. All right, good. Perfect game. 10 you, out of 10. You can also do all sorts of customization on their gear and junk. There's all of that. But also, this is the other thing. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Some people see this as a weakness of the game. For me, it's a strength. I think XCOM goes too far into the underground bunker shit with the excavate this and build this and put the... I understand why it's there, and it does add a ton of depth, but it's not my favorite part of playing XCOM. I like to get into my missions. I like to get upgrades and get back out there, and let's go. This game is more about getting out there and let's go. The in-between mission stuff is mostly about, all right, what loot did we get last time? Who's best to hold this new gun, or who should have this grenade, or who's better with this armor? Attach mm-hmm. it to the people in your team that you think are best. There's off, there's often story stuff, too, and, you, and that stuff's fun to watch. But, but really, it's just about equipping your dudes and having those improvements be manifest and then get out there and fight, you know, do the next mission. That is way more my speed than spending way too much time at my base. 
Um, I love base spending. Time. I know, and that may, and That's like I said, there could memories. be a, this could be a downside for some people, and maybe you're one of them. I don't know. Well, you, I mean, I like the base building stuff, but I didn't like shell, Fallout Shelter. Like, I don't like just doing that, but to me, it's part of that whole ebb and flow of XCOM. You know, I right. just really, yeah. But I don't think that would keep me from playing Gears Tactics. Like, I'm not right. Well, <laughs> I'm not like there's no base to upgrade. I'm not playing this great game. Right. You're mostly just upgrading your that. dudes and their capabilities and you can, you know, you hire new new gears as you find them. Gears can die. There's a there's a hardcore or, or Iron Man mode. All the things people like in XCOM, those kinds of modes are all in there. Um I like it. I like it a lot. Crazy time for then Fire Axis to release Chimera Squad or yeah. Chimera Squad. It Chimera. makes me wonder well, I mean, Chimera, Chimera Squad is only on PC, not on console at all. It also mm -hmm. has really uh, shifty controller support, so I'm, it's probably why it isn't. I tried it. I didn't like it. Um, the game itself, though, I quite like. I played that, too. And the best thing it has going is Breach Mode, which is this... Every mission starts with you breaching. So, uh, you're let's say it's a, I don't know, a building. A bunch of bad guys are in there. Uh, you're a preset team now, okay, with characters with, like, names and voices. You don't make your own squad. This is not that XCOM. This is a preset thing. It's a mix of aliens, hybrids, and humans. And all of you go in there for a fight, and it starts with Breach. And with Breach, you say, all right, I want to put this guy on point. I want him on this other door. And the reason he's on that door is because he has explosives. He can set off the C4 thing and bust right in, whereas nobody else has that. So he's the only way I can get him upstairs. But these other guys, they can just bust through the door. All right, I have my guys ready. I hit the breach button. It's just like the fire button. Hit breach. Kabam! Everything goes into slow motion. They bust into the rooms. The camera uh, zooms down. And so they're looking in there kind of from their view. And it goes... And then you see who you've got surprised. And so like, let's say there's a bad guy over here. You can choose to pop him. Pa pow Kills him because he's just not ready. Next guy, shift over here. Pa pow Kill him camera goes upstairs those guys kill their those guys almost in like back over the shoulder third person mode um, you're not aiming or anything but you know it's very satisfying that breach mode is very cool and every mission starts that way so maybe that'll get old after a while i don't know but i really like that part and as soon as so, the breach is over and some people have died some have been injured some of them you miss it just sort of depends then everyone scatters to a little starting cover and then and then a real xcom mission begins the way you're used so to it i i have uh i have a couple questions go a couple thoughts uh and a tinfoil hat theory go uh okay so my tinfoil hat theory is this do you get the impression playing this game that this is them testing the waters for ideas they may be kicking around for what the next real XCOM is going to be and see how people react to it. Yes. What about a PvP game where it's a one-on-one -on -one match versus two, like a chess game? Well, there's none of that in here, but I've never... I've always wondered why there isn't more multiplayer in XCOM because it seems like it would be really suited well for that sort of one-on-one -on -one chess, chess match, but I guess they don't do that in any of those games, right? One and two didn't have it. Um, I thought there was multiplayer Was there in one of them. I, I don't know. I, I never remember. played it. I didn't, yeah. e I didn't either. I mean, I, I just John's idea sort of made me think. Like, cause I, this looks cool, and it looks like it just—it's basically like a mod for XCOM Two. Like, yeah. it's just all the assets, but you know, gussied up, made polished, made to look unique for yeah. the experience. Yeah, it is. Um, it is that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just wonder. You know, they're sitting around trying to decide on the products they're going to release. Like, what made them? Because it's not like this is a, oh, we're just going to make something for mobile. Like, this is a PC release mm -hmm. made to be awesome for PC, have a low price point. Mm -hmm. 10 release bucks right now. Still it's still only 10 bucks. It'll be 20 in uh, a week or something. But right now, it's just 10. Yeah, I guess, like John says, like, I just, I wonder, I wonder why. Well, here, so yeah. here's my, here's my direct answer to that, John. I think it's, it's to experiment a little bit, but I also think it's to experiment mostly with the format to say, hey, would XCOM players play? more frequently released but less expensive and more focused experiences like this this is all set after the major wars of the thing things have settled so it's more like i mean you got aliens hybrids and humans working together you're on kind of a police force kind of thing you're like a like a squad yeah it squad looked like team. one of the levels was a bank robbery it was yeah like exactly <laughs> 
And so you're trying to keep the peace. You know the timer that's like doomsday timer on the on two and one? Yeah. Yeah. This has a timer, but it's just a timer to It's like public unrest. Civil, civil, civil unrest. unrest. Yeah, like that? that's it. Yeah. So you're now policing in a post XCOM world where we've had to pick up the pieces and work together and all that. And it's a little lighter that way. Like the story bits are a little f- more fun and, you know, people are just taking shots at each other. It's not like the serious tone the previous games have had where the whole world's in the balance or whatever. Also, those cutscenes are all very comic booky. They're not, it's like hand drawn 2D stuff. It's not, there's no 3D characters talking the way it is in Gears or another XCOM game. Oh, okay. I see. So yeah. they've saved some money there. The VO is great, though. That stuff's all really good. The characters are well realized. Like, I don't, I don't see any of it as a problem, but it's definitely meant to be this smaller experience. You're not going to be able to just add new people to your roster anytime you feel like it when one dies. In fact, I think if one dies, I think you're, actually, I don't know what the fail state is because. The goal here is that this is a team of characters with story bits that play out through the game. And so it's much more that way. And also the in-between bits for that, way watered down from XCOM 2's level of underground bullshittery that I don't love. So I I kind of prefer this. Um, But anyway, I think, to answer your question, I think they are experimenting in that way. They're like saying, hey, how about bite-sized versions of this stuff? I vote no. I'm going to just be a salty old man and go no. But I also think that this breach mode could be amazing in a full blown XCOM three game. Well, that's the that's the thing that's weird to me is is so you had XCOM and it was just sort of a you run around the map till somebody spots you and then there's a fight, and then you had XCOM two and it was okay. Well, you're stealthed at the beginning and you run around and you can set up and you can initiate and then you either get spotted or you initiate combat and there's this stealth section. Now they got breach. I feel like like rather than do 100% all the time one thing, I I'd, I'd personally like to see them do a mix of it. You know, like certain missions you're going to be breaching, certain missions you're going to have the element of surprise, certain missions you're not going to have the element of surprise. Like, I, I kind of feel like the answer is you do all of it. You don't just go like, well, yeah, you're breaching 100% of the time. Right. And and the breach thing may, get, like I said, I've only done, I think, four missions. And every time the breach was really fun and I looked forward to it. But maybe that changes. Maybe after a it while. It sounds super cool. Like, I, I am excited to play it. Um, I know, uh, I think last week I said, like, they removed the stuff I like about XCOM. And that's true. Um so I don't think this is going to hit quite so high for me because the stuff I like about XCOM isn't in there. But Breach Mode does sound super cool. I don't even mind the idea of characters with more personality, but I don't know. So much of XCOM is just making my friends and like stupid characters and sending them on missions. It's the same thing as uh, Oregon Trail. Like... I want to take a picture of the tombstone about how Ben died of dysentery and send a picture to Ben and go, ha ha, you died of dysentery. You suck Yeah. for something he had no part in. Yeah. Like that's, that's part of the game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. I, I'm, I am on the fence as to how you will feel about this game because I actually think the characters are interesting enough that you might just really like where they go and, and that the characters themselves are worth the journey. Um, the gameplay itself is just going to be reminiscent of what you've always played in XCOM. And there's, you know, all that depth is there. But you're going to get to use these psychic powers of an alien on your team against bad guys. Like, there's some cool stuff like that did going that on. They did that in XCOM too. Yeah, that's they did. New. They did, but they didn't do it with a guy that's like, you know, the dude in Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, the big tall guy played by uh, Doug Jones, the, I forget what his name is, Naru or. I think I've seen pictures of him. I don't watch Star Trek Discovery. It's though. he's one of the greatest characters in Star Trek history. He's so good. I'm not even saying Discovery's that good, but that character, amazing. Anyway, he's a lot like him, and this hybrid guy's kind of a dick, and there's a girl who's a little sassy, and there's the chick in charge is super tough. And it's just there's just fun archetypes going on. Um, like if they want to go on a date, you've got me. And I just showed the chat the two differences <laughs> between the art styles. There's this cartoony one for or, you know, comic book you won for XCOM, and then they've gone way uber-realistic or realistic as you get for Gears. Uh, it's just an interesting contrast. If you ask me right now which of the two I'd rather play right now, Gears is the one that's really pulling me right now. And I didn't expect that. I kind of was thinking, oh, what's this little also-ran going to be? They made, like, a triple-A freaking badass title. It's cool. 
And so I think that's the one I'm I'm going to focus on. I'm just going to play that for now. I think that's the one I'm the most interested in of the two. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I also beat uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake on baby mode with John and uh, and beat you know, the... Uh, I, I would say be fair to yourself. You played probably <laughs> half to maybe even two-thirds of that game on normal. Yeah, I played most of... I played that whole first, what, three hours on normal. The back three, I probably... That was probably about how much I... I, I let it knock me down. Um, the reason I wanted it to knock me down was to give me better snap-on aiming with a controller, and it never did really. Like if the auto aim was bad, it was not even evident. Maybe I didn't turn the option on or something, because um, I felt like I never had really good handle on that controller-wise. But it was fun. I screamed a lot. John was there to help me through it. Uh, it was funny. It was a good time. So you can go watch uh, the vods of that and decide if you uh, should enjoy that or not. I and you got to uh, yeah. you got to experience what I was talking about a couple weeks ago with the it's important to be able to pull the trigger. That's right. You got to pull that trigger. You were right about that. I've come around. Not that I didn't dis- I didn't disagree with you before, but I didn't have the context. the The feeling of that I don't want to give anything away, but there's a certain gun, literally with a trigger, that if they didn't let me do that, I would have been really disappointed. Like that would have sucked. And the fact that they let me do it. That I got to press it and I got to do that thing, that part you know about, was rad. So, yeah, John's right. Always, the game should let you pull the trigger. That's how it should be. Uh, I want that on my tombstone. The pizza, not my, <laughs> not the place I died. Okay. Uh, 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 John, you played, you're almost done with Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's good. How's that feeling? Yeah, I still got uh, still got a little ways to go, but I'm nearing. I'm. I think I'm nearing. What chapter? The end. What chapter? I don't know. Uh, Ooh, I I got half? a notice about like, hey, you should complete side quests because you're probably not ever going to do side quests ever again. Oh, I've now uh, you got all a... those. I've now okay. completed all those. So side you're quests. in sector five to seven slums doing quests basically before you go up the wall. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you have a. Little... A long road ahead of you. Okay. Well, that's exciting because I'm... Not like a terribly long. You're in the, It's the home stretch, but it's not just over with a couple of boss encounters. You're looking at... There's some really great cinematics coming up that you haven't seen that I think are awesome and mind-blowing. And like, yeah, there's a, 10 hours maybe left. Like, there's, wow. if you're quick, there's a ton left to do. Uh, well, there. here is what is amazing about that game. I don't know if I have ever, like, overall loved a game and everything it was doing while hating one element of it so much. Mm. I hate the combat system in that game so much, more than more than I can put into decent words, yet the parts, everything else about that game, basically, I love so much that the net experience is extremely positive. Like, And the only reason I notice how much I hate the combat is because I'm like, man, how do I love this game this much despite this thing? Uh, but it's so good. It, it's so, it's so, so beautiful. Good. The animation's beautiful. The characters are beautiful. The world's weird. The music's amazing. That's there's some a lot real of, yeah. emotional spots. There's mm-hmm. some there's some mm-hmm. tough goodbyes in there. Mm-hmm. And, Tifa uh, going, breaking down finally and being like, why can't we just win? We always lose. We just lose, lose, lose. Like Tifa's so the, right the brunette main lady, right? That sounds dumb yeah. to say. I just she, have... She's the fighter. Okay. Yeah. Everyone loves her. That's all I hear about online. Everyone loves Tifa. Tifa, Tifa. Tifa does Tifa. Well, well, all the characters are great. I mean, I would say I love all of the characters. Mm. Yeah, all the characters are really enjoyable. I every time I don't remember much about the mimic guy. I don't remember much about the mimic guy except he gave you mimic, which was important. Oh, he said Muppet guy, mimic guy, mimic. No, there was a secret guy that because it's part of the mimic combo for Knights of the Round, Knights of the Round, mimic Knights of the Round. And then someone with the mimic materia mimics the mimics of Knights of the Round. What do the mimics do? To, uh, there's like the shapeshifter deal? No, no. It just copies the last ability used, oh, okay. including a summon. So in that game, you'd summon the most powerful summon, Knights of the Round. Right. And it was like a 10-minute animation. 
uh, and then you would mimic the 10 minute animation and then mimic the mimic and you'd be doing 80 minutes of uber damage to the uber bosses. And then, oh. I'm, I'm going to play the original. I'm definitely doing that. Are you really? I am also going to yeah. probably stick with playing the original. I bought it on PlayStation. I think it's going to be a PlayStation experience. Like yeah. just chilling on my PlayStation. I'm going to be replaying it. So, so John, you got it on PC. Bo play it on PlayStation. I will not be playing resident or sorry, resident evil seven. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, the old one. I'll play the new one maybe at some point. I'm probably going to get around to it, but I don't want to play that I, old one. So I did do this, though, because I was just curious about the story, and I kind of I wasn't 100% sold that I was going to play through the original seven again. Yeah. So I watched a, like, here's that. I mean, it wasn't short. It was still long. But, like, here's a run-through of everything that happens in Final Fantasy VII. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I want to uh, know I don't how much... Hear I don't want to hear any I want to know how much of this, you know... <laughs> how much of this theory that this is a sequel... And are you, you going to talk details? No. Uh, okay. I, I was just kidding. But I am going to make a bunch of Final Fantasy VII people angry. So that'll come up. Okay, keep uh, doing that. But, I, I like, it's spoilers. But at the same time, now that I'm going to play the old one, I don't want to hear... Oh, it's not spoilers. All I was going to say is like, so I got to the stuff. I I saw what the stuff is past Midgar, you know, that would be in theoretically a sequel to this. And last week, Bo expressed concern. Well, what if what if they change the story or something like that? And watching a summary of what happens post Midgar, you can change that story. It kind of goes off the rails. Dude, at the beginning of the show, you were like, I can make anything (laughs) sound bad. (laughs) <laughs> that's true that is true and that might be the case that's why i kind of want to play it i want to find yeah. out if that's true but it seems that, like even that you can story show is just a lot of the game of... you can show in a random assemblage of screenshots of the game and say look how crappy this game is why does anyone like it and that's very believable and true as well so yeah no this this package cannot be judged that way you gotta you've got to play the old one if you're curious i don't know man the post midgar stuff looked like a lot of i don't know maybe we should go get a guy it's well, weird it's Dude, not, gold saucer, the gold saucer level <laughs> it's just like casino level this is a massive casino place mm. and the music's and you listen to that for eight hours as you get through the zone you're like <laughs> uh, I, I will say the dance number in remake is incredible really yes yep. oh yeah oh and you my participate gosh. in it yes and it you're so perform- good. how well you perform in it so one thing you need you need to know if you don't already know is that the dress that you wear yeah there's three different options and you get one of the different one, and Aerith and Tifa have three different dresses depending on dialogue options and choices. Yeah. So, you and you, I think your performance in the dance number also impacts that. So, um, so you know, so I've done two playthroughs of the game, and one time, the first time I got the gaudy pink super dress after the dance number, uh-huh. and then the second time I got like, um, a more elegant kind of poorer looking dress but not the shabby one that's in the trailer so apparently the one that's in the game trailer is the worst of the shabbiest looking or most farmer looking farmer girl looking of the three i don't know what on i got it looked regal it was black and blue and very nice it's a very pretty um, maybe that's the one i'm thinking of so that one is nothing compared to the other two okay <laughs> well you, you must have okay. seen one you watch my playthrough i didn't see look that up, part in your scott play. look up look up the uh, clouds dresses clouds dresses <laughs> all right let's see clouds dresses i need to know if i got the good one all right here I, uh oh you might have gotten one of the good ones actually yeah hang on here look oh I'm all the image now. searches are ladies in cla- dresses that have it's cloud in, prints. it's in discord the three dresses okay let me take oh geez louise so the first time i got the middle one uh-huh and the second I got time the, i got, the, one I got the middle one i got the blue dress oh okay then i think that's like the coolest one right it looks like it has the most why is Stop. Cloud wearing dresses again? What's the deal? He uh, he, do you spoiler alert for anyone listening? Scott, do you care about spoilers? I don't care. No. no. All right. So in Wall Market, a zone in this, a nightlife zone, a cas- the Las Vegas under the plate, if you will. Yeah. There's a place, uh, there's a gang, uh, Corneo's gang, and he additions wives, three women, and he picks one to be their wife. But the secret is they all end up, it's basically like, human sex trafficking Ooh. but 
not told in an in-depth, hard-hitting way. It's just very cartoony and light. But basically, he picks one as a wife. The other two are for the rest of the boys okay. to do. And there, there's a basement room where there's like a rack and BDSM chamber. They in there get and stuff. drugged. It's Oh, well, they do get up. drugged, a gas drug, too. Um, but to get it, so to get in, you have to be a girl who's auditioning. So Tifa and Aerith. Yeah get in you know they're they fight so tifa's already in by default super easy you've got to get someone to sponsor Aerith. then it's like well how's cloud gonna get it and he's a boy and they're like well one of the dons in the local neighborhood uh who's flamboyantly gay for sure notions of gender need not apply when it comes to true beauty mm -hmm. uh, cloud and then so he sort of introduces you to this concept through a dance number and through a makeup makeover session and you end up dressed up as a girl and what's great about it is everyone's very complimentary there's a lot of cat calling and there's a sequence where you're walking from the honeybee inn to corneo's hideout where men are cat calling you and it's basically harassing you the whole way which is this really clever i don't know if it's a statement but this sort of you can imagine as a gaming art experience a lot of men will be playing this and a lot of men at who might enjoy the game and then get to this area might get a sense of feeling of what it's like to be on the other side of those cat calls and that's a very interesting, it's a very interesting sequence of events because it isn't trying, it doesn't really feel like it's trying to say a message, like, like I have to think wearing dresses is cool or anything, but it feel, it doesn't, it feels very accepting and warm, I guess, if that makes sense, or just very 2020 in its intelligence about it, which is really striking, not in the original game. And I'm just like, man, I look hot when I get yeah. that dress. I'm like, I'm a hot well, boy. And that's that's my favorite. <laughs> my, that's my favorite cloud moment in the entire game. Is yeah. at some point someone alludes to him, like, oh, you wore a dress. And cloud, who was he was not pleased about what he had to do, but he just goes, yes, and I rocked it. And then he moves on, but like he basically owns it. And he was like, I did a phenomenal job at this, okay? And he just moves on with the day. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> this is my yeah, favorite yeah, exactly. cloud moment in the whole yeah. game. Wow. All he's right. uncomfortable about it, but he doesn't go on a tirade. He's just like, can we move on? I feel right. like I've he's learned. Just like, he's just like, yeah, I, I nailed it. Let's move on. I've learned That's something great. today that I didn't expect to. So. It was great. That whole segment was great. <laughs> the whole gym that wants to do squats was great. Uh, just this real supportive <laughs> group of gym goers that are just way into squats. Like Scott, you uh, should get this I game. It's really good. Thing. All right. Yeah. I'm probably going to play it. I don't know. The, the peer pressure is real, man. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Bo, it says here you tried Idol Champions. I see. Uh, I did. Speaking of that, or Steve Hamaker was in the chat earlier. That dude's always got, he's always logged in playing Idol Champions. So why? What? What is this? <sighs> so the reason that happened was I was on my PlayStation. You know when you accidentally install things while you're browsing? Yeah. You know, just, it was like, oh, it's on my. It's like my grandma. I accidentally installed it. Okay, I didn't realize I installed fine. it, and then I saw it in my, you know, it, it, PlayStation <laughs> tells you your most recent installs, you know, I'm like, I've seen this game because I follow D&D &D stuff, like, the, and I think Scott Kurtz was playing it, and he's got some of his characters from, he from does. Binwin, you know, are in the game. Yeah, they're part of like, it. And look, it's a, I know it's a clicker game. Mm-hmm. And it was that moment where I'm like, okay, it's 1230. I wrapped up playing my game, but I want to be stubborn about going to bed. I don't know what TV show to watch. All right, boom. Let me activate Pac-Man. Pac <laughs> Let me activate <laughs> Idle Champions. And oh my God. I hate Clicker so much. Yeah. And I'm really mad that D&D &D is making a game. First of all, like all Clickers, it's charming. It's probably one of the best examples of it, I have to imagine. Mm -hmm. It's fun to play. Like, I found myself playing, an hour went by, and I was like, oh, my God. But on some on some level, it's satisfying psychologically, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I hate it as well, because there's so little actual gameplay that it's not worth time or respect. I'm not solving any problems with my brain while I do it or anything. I'm just trying to get to the next milestone, and it's infuriating how it affects you, like how you will play it. How, you know, like I should actually from second one be like, no, I know what this is. I don't want to play it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I'm not happy about it. Well, uh, at least you're, uh, at least you're admitting you have, you, you, you did it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I respect that you at least uh, look at it and go, all right, I, I tried your clicker and F that. It sucks. I mean, I might even play it again. 
<laughs> you might even still do it. That's awesome. Well, because on the PlayStation, right? <laughs> Click. There you go. Let's start. Well, I uh, got good news, everybody who's listening to the show. After this, we're going to play some Heroes games. And, yeah. Uh, pretty excited I've about it. I've been playing it. a lot of that, too. So. At, least, uh, at least a couple, I think, we'll have time for. So that'll be the aim right after the show here uh, today. And I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, freaking Zoom got all weird. So I'm not using Zoom for a while until they... I don't know why they have suddenly I have a limit. We did three hours of There Will Be Dungeons and no issues. It just They didn't have the limit. Now they have the limit. Screw these guys. Anyway, hey, that's the end of the show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I know we did, so uh, that's I'm just going to assume you did too. If you'd like to know more about us, go to our website. <clears throat> it's over at frogpants.com slash core. You can support us on our Patreon at patreon.com slash core. You can follow us on Twitter, core pod, John underscore Jagger. I'm at Scott Johnson, Bo Schwartz. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Bo, any final word of wisdom before I before I go? What do you get? Uh, well, I was going to say um, I wore a dress, and it's fine. Oh, that's C. What else do you need? Thanks, everybody, for I'm listening. Also, give me a senior star citizen again. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>